Welcome to Across the Goal Line, a sports podcast brought to you by diehard fans. And today, we have another pretty packed show for you as we continue following the chase. As the first race of the round of 12 took place on Sunday, we'll dive into some golf as we take a look at the Ryder Cup from Hazeltine as it concluded uh, about two weeks ago now. And also, we have uh, we are going to continue our preview of the NHL season as it gets underway tonight with a slew of games, four to be exact, as we look at the World Cup of Hockey that was played around the same time as the Ryder Cup. And we'll bring you up to date on the MLB, the MLB playoffs as the championship series are imminent for both leagues. We also have you covered on the results from SmackDown Live, second pay-per-view, No Mercy from Sunday. And to cap off the show today, we have our football reviews from the past week and picks for this upcoming week for both college and the NFL. So let's dive right in and begin the show with some NASCAR. And for that, I'll toss it over to Luke. Yeah, NASCAR is at Charlotte this past weekend. Jimmy Johnson won. Uh, everyone knows he's my favorite driver. Um, he's into the round of eight now. Um, I should have picked him, actually thought about it, but I didn't, um, but oh well. Um, yeah, so Jimmy Johnson won, and uh, what happened in the Ryder Cup, Corey? What happened in the Ryder Cup? Well, yeah, we are going to move on to the Ryder Cup now, and it took place around two weeks ago now from Hazeltine Golf Club in Chaska, Minnesota, and it was the USA's turn to host the iconic event. For those unfamiliar with the Ryder Cup, it's a three-day competition played every two years that puts the best of the U.S. against the best from Europe in a battle of golf dominance. Uh, the two alternate, uh, the, the two alternate, rather, where the Ryder Cup is played, and the event features three match play styles on Friday and Saturday. Two teams, uh, uh, the teams of two, compete in a foursome, four foursome matches. That's kind of a tongue twister there. Four foursome matches, in which shots alternate between teammates, and four more four ball matches, in which players play their own shots in the lowest counts in the end. And then on Sunday, all competitors take part in singles action to ultimately decide the winner of the Ryder Cup more often than not, unless teams straight up sweeps everything. Because each match is worth one point and there are 28 points total to be had. And the defending country, the team that, or the country's country, I guess, Europe's not really a country, it's just a conglomeration of countries, but... It's a continent. Yeah. Uh, the defending champion needs only 14 points of the 28 and the challenging country needs 14 and a half and in this year's edition the usa walked away victorious winning 17 to 11 over europe and capturing their first Ryder cup since 2008 and patrick reed was pretty much the star of the weekend i would say for the u.s as he teamed with jordan spieth to pick up multiple points on friday and saturday before getting things off on the right foot sunday by beating europe's best of the weekend rory McIlroy, in the first match of the day and what was the best match of the event, as both men went back and forth at each other, not only on the golf course, but in the stands as well. They kind of jabbed at the fans, uh, at least McElroy jabbed at the fans, and Reed got them fired up. So, But it was a really heated, emotional match, and the best match in probably Radica history in recent memory, I'd have to say, as well. As a whole, the U.S. looked primed to win from the jump. They took the, all the points from Friday's morning's uh, the foursomes, then they led 4-0 going into the afternoon when Europe got some points back. Saturday then saw Europe claw back into striking range before the U.S. pulled away at the end of some of the four-ball matches to give themselves a good lead heading into Sunday's singles action in which they won seven of the total 12 matches and halved another to decimate Europe to win back the Ryder Cup on American soil. So in two years, Europe will host it. Uh, I'm not sure where, though, but they'll try to get that back from the U.S., all right, now we're going to shift into some hockey, continuing our preview of the upcoming NHL season that gets underway tonight, Wednesday, with four games slated to be played. And I made a mistake last week because I thought the Flyers opened out, uh, out on Wednesday here. Uh, tonight, that would be, in, I thought they opened in Anaheim, but they don't play until Friday, and it's against the Kings in Los Angeles. I could have sworn they played the Ducks to open the season, but it had been a while since I last saw the NHL schedule, so that, that was kind of like the last thing I remembered, I guess. Uh, they do play the Ducks thir- next Thursday, though, uh, at home, though. So I'll, I was off on a whole bunch of different levels there. The day where it's being played, but I got the teams right, I guess. So that counts for something. Not much, though. Yeah. But that's not what we're here. That's not what we're talking about. No, we got the World Cup of Hockey for you today from Toronto as Canada, the home team. Oh, you well, say go something? on. I was going to say the Pens play tomorrow night, too. They do. They do play the, tomorrow night. Uh, against Capitals. Against Capitals. Oh, right. I didn't care because it's the penguins i don't care yeah you don't care uh but uh that's not yeah but i'm not talking about from toronto canada the home team essentially they show that they reign supreme in the world of hockey as they defeated team europe in the finals two games to none in the best of three series to take the crown 
Europe was a definite surprise finalist among many as they beat Sweden in the semifinals and also beat the USA in the group stage to help fuel their run to the finals. Uh, uh, sorry. You all right? Yeah. Uh, I just probably need some water here. But the the bigger story was that the, U- the U.S. didn't even make it out of the group stages, falling to both Europe and Canada in the first two games before actually beating the Czech Republic in the final game. Both representatives of Group A made the finals, Europe and Canada. As previously mentioned, Europe, they defeated Group B winners, Sweden, and Canada defeated Russia to make it to the finals as well. Only eight teams were featured in the entire tournament, with two countries mixing, two, those being Europe and North America. They had multiple countries in there. North America had just the U.S. and... Yeah, yeah. The U.S., they had the U.S. and Canada, only players under the age of 23. And the North American team was a fun one to watch because it showcased uh, a lot of the future of the NHL. Guys like Connor McDavid, Jack Eichel, this year's number one pick, Austin Matthews, who got to play in front of his hometown fans in Toronto. So that's they, the Toronto faithful. They get to check out their new guy. Also, the number two pick in this year's draft, Patrick Lina, he played for Finland. Uh, this was a great little, like almost an appetizer for the season as you got to see a lot of the guys that you haven't seen in a while since the season ended back in like June or July it was. So you haven't seen them in a while, and they got to go at it with the best in the world. It's much more serious warm-up, I would say, than the preseason offers more than often not. So it, it'll get these guys ready to go for as the season kickoffs tonight, and we'll continue all the way into through June. So long season ahead of us, and it, it all gets started tonight. All right, going to move on. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the MLB playoffs. We previewed the playoffs last week. And we aren't looking so hot right now on the AL on side. On the AL side. The NL's already. Yeah, because both the Red Sox and the Rangers, who we picked, got swept by their respective opponents. The Blue Jays defeated the Rangers in a clean sweep, and so and the Indians defeated the Red Sox in a clean sweep as well. So those two now are matched up to meet in the ALCS, which begins Friday night. Um, it, sh- uh, it should be a good series, I guess. It I'm should not, be, yeah. It should be, I mean... Game starts uh, Friday in Cleveland. Uh, it actually is part two of Cleveland versus Toronto as well. First time, and I'm speaking of uh, basketball and baseball, first time the NBA and MLB teams from the same city will meet in the league semifinal in the same year since 1969. And as many as, as many of you remember, the Cleveland Cavaliers played the Toronto Raptors in the uh, Eastern Conference Finals for the NBA uh, playoffs this past season. And now you got the Cleveland Indians going up against the Toronto Blue Jays. So, yeah, first time M- N- NBA and MLB teams from the same city will meet in the league semifinal in the same year since 1969. I thought that was pretty interesting. It definitely is pretty interesting when you think about it. I mean, kind of crossing over in two sports right there, you yeah. know, a little bit of history. The, almost coincidental, you could say. I don't, I'm not sure if you want to call it coincidental, maybe, but uh, either way, it should be a good series, I would have to say. Um, I mean... We didn't pick either of these teams to make it, so do you want to no. make, you want to pick it? You want to pick this ALCS then? Yeah, we will. Um, I think it's going to go seven games, and um, I'm going to go with Cleveland Indians. I think they're just a notch better um, than the Toronto Blue Jays right now. But um, the reason why is I think it's going to go seven. It's going to go back and forth. I think Cleveland's going to win the first uh, two in the, in Cleveland, and then they go to uh, Toronto for three, I believe, and then. Toronto's going to be up 3-2, but then I think Cleveland will uh, get, win game 6 and 7 and uh, clinch uh, the ALCS and go to the World Series to play. Um, I still think the Cubs, but we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, we'll get to the NL side of things here really soon. Uh, I'm going to go with the Cleveland Indians as well. Home team. I love home teams, as as our football picks indicate, yeah. at least. Um, and most of our picks as a whole, too, that we've done on the show. Yep. But... Uh, they, they do seem maybe a little notch better than the Blue Jays at the moment. Also, I mean, the talking about the Cavs earlier, they br- they lifted that little curse of Cleveland this when they won the NBA championship they did. this season. So they did. hey, maybe the Cleveland sports world gets a little rejuvenated, and maybe the Indians come around and yeah. maybe make a miracle run and win the World Series. Who knows? So, um, the only bad thing about that is uh, Cleveland has the. Browns yeah. playing in the NFL, and there's no way in hell they're going to win the Super Bowl yeah. this year. So um, two out of three would be good, but, uh, yeah, they're not going to get uh, a perfect uh, clean sweep there for the three uh, respective professional teams that yeah. everybody watches. They do have an AFL team, but uh, I don't think anybody gives two shits about that. Yeah, and Ohio as a whole has a hockey team in Columbus. And then they got, they got Ohio State, you know, who has been good in recent years. 
Um, they were bad there the one year after Terrell Pryor left um, because of the scandal with tattoos and everything. But yeah, Ohio Ohio has uh, had some good uh, sports teams in uh, recent years, especially after LeBron came back too. Yeah, it is a big igniter. I mean, LeBron did come back to a, a pretty decent team, at least talent-wise. Yeah. Because they had a bunch of top picks since he left, and then he came back to all this fantastic talent. M- I mean, minus, like, Anthony Bennett, because he wasn't that good no. as a number one pick. Not as a number one pick. He's he's decent at best. He's yeah. not no number one pick, obviously. He's a bust as a one number one pick, though, is basically the moral of it. I agree. Uh, definitely one of the more shocking number one picks in NBA history. Yeah. yeah, and I just I just uh, remember that's just too, side. <laughs> looking at my stats here with the Cubs beating the Dodgers. I guess we can get in the NL now. The Cubs beat the uh, I mean the Cubs beat the Giants, Giants not Giants. the Dodgers. Excuse me. Um, the Dodgers are also in the playoffs. So um, Cubs beat the Giants. The Cubs are going their second straight NLCS. The Blue Jays are going their second straight ALCS. Um, I actually just noticed that. I don't know why. Um, they both lost last year. In, they did. In their respective series. They did. So, um, I think Toronto's going to lose again, but I still have Chicago going to the to the uh, World Series. Um, and I think because they're for real, two nights in a row they come back and tie the Giants in the top of the ninth. They lost first game Monday night, but then they beat, uh, beat the Giants um, after coming back down four runs in the top of the ninth Tuesday night. Advance to their second straight in LCS, as I just said. Same with the Blue Jays, just the AL. And they'll play the winner of the Dodgers-Nats, who are currently tied at two games. Game five is Thursday in D.C. Uh, from Nationals Park. <clears throat> Giants, even your, uh, even your streak is snapped. Lose first playoff series since 2003. 2003, the Cubs also lost because of Steve Bartman. I'll just throw that out there, Corey. Yeah, uh, that year was – I was an uproar that year when that happened. And they even made a whole 30 for 30 out of it, I'm pretty sure, as well. I think it was a... At least in the... Maybe just Chicago. I think it was a short documentary, 30 for 30, is what Short it documentary, was. 30 for 30. Uh, I know they did something about that. Maybe it was... Maybe this the Cubs' curse as a whole since 1907 or 8? 08, 08 was last time 08. they... Uh, 1908, not 2008, yeah. obviously. But <laughs> won the World Series, so... Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you already mentioned it. The Nats, they play the Dodgers well. Upload dates Thursday, so tonight. Yeah. As uh, Scherzer uh, will be on the bump for the National. That's why I have the Nationals going through in this game. I'm just going to pick it right now uh, to kind of go into the NLCS. They got Scherzer on the mound. Their best pitcher, obviously. Uh, hopefully they can get Steven Stroud. I don't think he's going to be back. I, don't, I haven't been keeping up with that. Pro- anyway. Probably not. He probably won't be back. Yeah, and that's why they'll probably lose to the Cubs in the NLCS. Either team, yeah. I think, will lose to the Cubs in the NLCS. Yeah, though, the Cubs as are, a whole. Cubs are just too tough. They're for real. They're too tough. They have they have a solid four man rotation. That's yes, huge do. with all those guys. I mentioned pitching. It last week. Pitching is key. I mentioned it last week why I had them in the World Series. They're yeah, just, that pitching rotation is just so tough. Plus, they're freaking scoring runs. Yeah, I saw a stat where like maybe like two thirds of their runs up to like yesterday's game were scored by pitchers. Wow, because Ariad had a yeah, three Ariad had run. a home run. Uh, okay, that's it was right. either Hendricks or. Lester that had a two-run single or something, and another, the other one had Lester. I think it, it was either Lester or Hendricks that had a single for a run or something. So they scored like six out of like maybe nine runs or something like that. It was that's ridiculous as a total. So you're getting hit from your pitching. That's that's not a good thing as a whole because that means the rest of your guys aren't doing that yep. well. But still, that's that's a big help though. I mean, pitchers going out there helping themselves, you know. Sure is. Um, I'm also going to pick the Nationals in that Dodgers in that fi- for, in game five. for game five. I mean, I picked them. We both picked them to go play. The I mean, Cubs I wouldn't be surprised if they the lose the game though. So. I wouldn't be surprised if the Dodgers win because the Nationals they do this. The last two times they've been in the N- the NLDS, 2012 and 14. Coincidentally, both the Do- the Giants won both of those World Series. By the way, even year as well this year too, and the Giants ended up losing. Yeah, us. even years Their for them have been snap. a bad thing. Uh, so yeah, they lost. In 2012 to the Cardinals, three games to two. Blown save in the eighth inning in game five of that series. And then 2014, they lost to the World Series champion Dodgers in the NLDS, three games to one. You mean the Giants? The Giants. Dodgers. We Giants. both did that today within the past ten minutes. I mean, yeah. I mean, this one's even harder. Both California teams, both in the playoffs. It's, it's Even worse, it. they're playing the Dodgers right now, too. Yes. So that's kind of where I got it. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah, to the Giants, the world champion Giants. 
in 2014, three games to one. It, I, if I remember correctly, they had another blown save in there. They could have gotten the series tied in game four, I think it was. Uh, so, I mean, they haven't been looking. They seem to really fail when it comes to the big time in the playoffs because they've been pretty solid most They're years. They're not clutch. They're just not, haven't been clutch. They haven't been able to get good. It's the relievers that they haven't been. It's the closers and the yeah. relievers. Hey, they got Mark Melanson now, though. They got Mark Melanson now. They were hoping he would be the answer to hopefully – trying to be more consistent as a closer. So. He was uh, phenomenal in uh, Pittsburgh uh, when he was with the Pirates, uh, and they, you know, got rid of him. But, you know, it is what it is. As you said, the Nats had trouble with their closers. They had, they had Papelbon. Papelbon. They had Na- Drew Storen. Name him off if you know him. They had Drew Storen at first, and they had Papelbon. And then a couple years ago, back when they had the playoffs, they had Tyler Clippard, who's, I think he's in, like, San Diego or something now. Uh, I forget, but either way, nah, he's either in San Diego, I believe. He was in Arizona, and then he went to. No, he was in New York. They traded him to Arizona, but then they traded him back to New York. So I think he's playing with the Yankees. The Yankees, no. Oh, I think okay. Clippers with the Yankees. All right, but yeah, he was the closer that year. They lost to the Cardinals, and Drew Storen was the setup guy, and it was like bottom nine, one out away. Oh, you actually, now that I remember, twenty fourteen. They lost the game because Jordan Zimmerman went had a complete game, had a no hitter going, got got his no hitter broken up in like ninth inning with two outs. They took him out. Storen came in, gave up like a two run home run to lose the game or something that's, like that. He lost a no hitter. That took him out. That's unheard of. You never see that. Uh, yeah. So that except game, except we did, and that was know. that was the talk of Sports Center that morning. Yeah. So, I mean, ridiculous the Nationals, but. Either way, now our outlook is we still have the Cubs in the World Series, both of us. Yeah, but they're going to play the Indians now, and that'll be a, yeah. Instead of that'll uh, be a big win for either city, World Series. Oh, for sure. It's that it's that Midwest showdown. Uh, you know, you got Cleveland and Ohio and Chicago. Two and teams that haven't won a World Series in a long time, too. Exactly, and um, you know, especially with Cleveland, you know, they broke the streak for basketball. But if Chicago, if the Cubs can. You know, break this 108 year streak for World Series. They've obviously won a Super Bowl. The White Sox have won a World Series. 05. 05 against the Astros. Swim. And, and sure. um, who else they have? Chicago, the Bears. Yeah. Bears. They got Bulls. they got college football teams. Illinois won a national championship for college basketball. Um, not for college football though. They're you know still average. Uh, who else is in Illinois for uh, college football? That's FBS level. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Just Illinois, because Indiana and Purdue are in. Um, oh, Northwestern's in Chicago. Oh. Um, Northwestern's a pretty good school to go to. Um, but yeah, Indiana, Purdue, and uh, what's the other Big Ten school? I'm actually wearing my Big Ten shirt today, so I can uh, figure it out. Yeah, just Indiana and Purdue are in Indiana. Uh, Purdue's in West Lafayette, but yeah, so yeah, Chicago really hasn't had a whole lot else, and we a whole lot of other teams in the in the surrounding area or the state. But then we already talked about Ohio as well, you know, yeah. with Cleveland, Columbus, um, and then you got the, you got the Hall of Fame, Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Canton, Ohio. Yeah, I don't think there's any Hall of Fames in Illinois. Yeah, something I will say. Um, you got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland as well too. Oh, okay. So um, one thing I will say, as we you brought it up again, the Cleveland drought of just championships in general. Yeah. Uh, they had a humongous parade after the Cavs won. They're going to be if the Cubs win, there's going to be a more even a larger parade for them. If they for win. the Cubs, yeah, there'll be even a large one because I mean yeah. Chicago's even a bigger town than Cleveland. Oh, for sure, yeah. And you're going to have all the Chicago names. Plus, I mean Cleveland had a bunch of people that weren't from Cleveland yeah. there at their parade. So because it's mean, history, you want to go see history. It's history so. And if it's on TV, you got to watch it. And I said last week, too, we would possibly have somebody, you know, uh, call in to, um, you know, talk about the Cubs if they won the World Series. We got I got confirmation of that last night. He will be on if the Cubs won the World Series. Um, so stay tuned for that. Yeah. You want to move on now? I think it's about time we move, move on. on to, We're gonna uh, move on to some, some WWE. WWE. Diversity. But before we move WWE real quick, Corey, more breaking news. You got some? Oh. Um 
involves UFC. UFC. We didn't talk uh, UFC last week. We didn't preview it. So we would be reviewing it this week if we did. But anyways, we didn't. UFC 207 on December 30th. Ronda Rousey is going to face a champion, Amanda Nunes, for the championship. Um, it's going to be uh, Rousey's first fight since November of 2015. So what do you think about that, Corey? I don't like it. She's, you don't like it? She's just giving an... She's just getting a championship match without proving herself to be a championship It's contender. true. Yeah, I agree. Her first fight, she's going to get a championship match. That makes no sense. Yep. It makes zero sense. It just, it's all about money. Marketability. It's, 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 right, it's right after Christmas. It's going to be out in Vegas. You know, it's one day before New Year's Eve. Everybody's going to be out there. The place is going to be packed. It's money maker is what it is. It, it definitely is because it's just you're throwing Ronda Rousey. She's a name. And people are mm-hmm. going to flock that first fight back. Yep. People are going to want to watch it. I mean... It doesn't make any sense, though, as a pure, just as a fighting standpoint. Like, you just don't get a championship match just so you're coming back. I mean, come on. It doesn't make any sense. Either so, way. yeah, Rousey fighting at UFC 207, December 30th. We both have Chicago and Cleveland now in the World Series. We still both pick on Chicago before we move on to WWE. Well, I so didn't pick Chicago I, to begin I, with. I had the Rangers in the whole thing. Okay. So, I'm going to go Chicago now. You're in Chicago now. I'm, I'm still going to stick with Chicago. Uh, I've had them since the beginning. I stuck with my gut. Yeah, the Red Sox lost, but uh, either way, it'll it be a what it is. moment for. Because I know I left you hanging there at the end when I was talking there. But anyways, we feel good WWE for, Yeah, we'll move on to WWE. All right, WWE No Mercy just took place on Sunday night, and uh, I will say it wasn't the best show ever. Definitely, it had two really good matches, uh, two title matches, really good matches. Then the rest of it was kind of iffy at best, but. In a shock that No Mercy did, uh, many speculate to kind of compensate, make people watch this instead of the debate, which is on Sunday night as well at this time. They put the world title match on first, the triple threat match for the world title, on first to kick off the show, which is the first time in WWE history that's ever happened, the main event uh, the main event level, I guess. This is, they still call it the main event, even though the main event is always normally synonymous with the last match on the card. But yeah, or the co-main event next to last. I mean, but this is the main event from a pure, like, the title standpoint and whatnot, you know? Like, it is the main event, basically. Like, yeah. it's the biggest match. It's the most built-for match, whatever. But, yeah, the triple threat match between Dean Ambrose, John Cena, and AJ Styles ends with AJ Styles winning it, as we both predicted last week. And, I mean, the match was pretty good. Many good sequences that I saw. Uh, I mean, they're always featured in triple threats, a lot of good sequences. And then AJ, thanks to that no-DQ stipulation that... It seems like they seem to forget about a lot of times in triple threat matches. They don't seem to really play that into the factor, but uses a chair on Cena after Cena hit an avalanche AA on Ambrose, take him out of it, and then he hits Cena with a chair shot and wins. I mean, that's basically how it ended right there. I will say it's similar to the finish uh, of the WWE Live event we saw. Same match. Yes. Styles which, came in, cheated. Exactly. It was a low blow then. And that's but, uh, what live events are for. They're there you know, to experiment. Exactly. And they still get the fans involved, you know, they still make money, you know, it, it's a money maker. Everything is about money nowadays, and I've been saying this for, you know, years on end, and it's true, I think you can agree with me on it. I, yes, um, for sure. So, yeah, live events are, as you said, it was about the same match. Um, I actually just saw highlights of the match because I didn't even, I haven't even watched No Mercy yet. Um, I'm still getting caught up on some of the WWE Network stuff. I didn't even watch the presidential debate. Um, I mean, I didn't either. I mean, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. Um, I mean... It's just Hillary hell, says something. we might as well let Ken Bone as president <laughs> of the United States. Um, like, all of the couple minutes I've watched it, it was just Hillary says something and Trump comes back with a, some zinger. Basically. Yeah. That's you, should go to, you should go to jail. Which, you know... You know, she does, she does. I'm not going to say anything I, more about that. I, I have compared I it want, to I, a rap battle. A rap battle? What about a lip sync battle? <laughs> um, anyways. I've, I've made comparisons. I actually went and saw the Impractical Jokers on Sunday night, so that's why I didn't watch No Mercy and I didn't watch the presidential debate. I wasn't going to plan on watching the presidential debate anyway. I was going to watch Sunday Night Football between the Giants and the Packers. Um, and then I would have watched No Mercy, you know, some other time, but I still haven't. I've been busy. I've been real busy the past week and a half. Yeah, so... So yeah, Styles Styles won by a chair shot. Going back to that, Styles won by a chair shot, and now it looks like he's gonna face Ambrose again, probably as it stands uh, from last night at least. Well, 
He might at the at the yeah. time it does. But well, I mean, it's, gonna, like, it's gonna be at Survivor Series. That's what I'm, I'm about gonna to say. That Survivor Series. They have a whole. They almost have two months nearly to build a few. So styles, and I so. saw too. Becky Lynch is gonna be. Um, Becky Lynch is gonna be uh, defending her title then now since she was unable to compete against Alexa Bliss. She's gonna be uh, defending that November eighth whenever whenever WWE's ever in Scotland. Yes. So maybe because with Survivor Series it's gonna be the five on five. You know, typical match, elimination match. Maybe they have a WWE Championship match that same SmackDown, November 8th. And that November 8th, same day as Election Day here in the United States. Uh, so, you know, get those get those views up. No one's going to care about the election. Get SmackDown up to have a championship match. Um, because why w- they might still have a championship match at Survivor Series if they don't go this route. But that 5 on 5 match... Um, style. Obviously, Styles, Cena, Ambrose, SmackDown's five best people are probably going to be in it. So you can't have, and then Raw's going to have Owens. You know who else they have? Rollins. Rollins, um, Rollins, or so. Yeah, and, so um, they won't. They'll, they'll you have don't have think t- they have to have title matches? They're building this show or, to be or, just. Or will they have? Matches. Or will they have title matches and have the same? Superstars in the five on five. I mean, it's only two people that aren't going to be on. True, there. it's true. I mean, but then the problem becomes that the problem is they're having three different Survivor Series matches as announced on SmackDown last night. Well, a tag team edition and a women's edition as well. They would like to. Raw has to obviously come back they're and say yes or no. But you obviously know they're going to. And the women's one's going to be the worst because yeah, I don't even. You don't even see five women on Smack on Raw. Period. You see like three and four. Well, three. you'll have Bailey. And two of them are going to be you'll in have a, Bailey, in a Charlotte, match. Sasha. That's yeah, what I'm saying. That's match. what I'm saying. What if a you know for both women and the men to have both of them compete in championship matches, or just have them be in the. They can't have them just compete in a Survivor Series match because then you're talking one of your big four pay per views is just a bunch of Survivor Series matches. That's bullshit. Yeah, that is true. It would be terrible. No one would want to watch it. I bet you they. Still, I'm already turned off to the idea of Survivor Series because yeah. it's three different matches of the type. I bet you they yeah. still do have that championship match in Scotland. I don't. Uh, maybe no. get maybe just to get the ratings up. I don't know. We'll see. It's still a month away. It is a while away. But all right, the next match I on the card. I think the next one was Carmella and Nikki Bella. If I'm not mistaken, that was yep. the second match on, and Nikki Bella won this match. Uh, I. It didn't feel as though it was done to keep it... Well, she won. I didn't feel like it was done to keep the storyline moving at all. But they they are keeping the storyline moving despite Carmella losing. I thought Carmella should have won to help move the storyline along. But they're doing it anyway. Nikki won. Uh, that's all I really got to say about it. It wasn't anything special. Yeah. No one cared about it because it was after the title match pretty much. Well... It was it was one of those uh, piss break matches. <laughs> and there, yeah. are, there was a couple of them, but... And both women's matches followed title matches. So, so. yeah, so... Yeah, so pit, there's one... How many piss break matches did you say? One, All of them two, except for two. Three, so... Could have taken a piss during any of these. Yeah, that's true. Except for the Intercontinental and World title matches. That's true. Uh, the next match, then, was the tag team title match. If I, I mean, Luke, you actually have the actual like order of the cards, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. The tag team title match was next? Yeah, the tag team okay. title match was next. Uh, Slater and Ryder retained, and they won again. And I'm not sure why. Yeah, who knows? They should move on from them to develop the feud between American Alpha and the Usos, which they did again on SmackDown. Chad mm-hmm. Gable took on, I forget which Uso, Jimmy or Jay. I don't remember. They both look like... The only way I can tell them apart now is... They're twins. That, that one wears a shirt, racist. one doesn't wear a shirt. They're twins. Wrestles. One one wears a shirt when he wrestles, one doesn't wear a shirt when he wrestles yeah. now. So that's the only way I can tell them apart now. Um, but... Maybe they have American Alpha one as Fire Series. Over Slater and Rhino, then. Maybe. If that's the case. But then there's a... T- that's the problem. There's only, like, seven tag teams on SmackDown. All of them are going to be in yeah. the Survivor Series match. Yeah. Like, that's that's why I'm at whole against this. Like, Well, and then they got the NXT uh, Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Maybe they bring up a couple of those. A couple of those tag teams. Maybe. Because that, that'll be over. Yeah. This will be... Survivor Series is the Sunday before Thanksgiving, November twentieth. Yeah. So we'll, well see. Yeah, well, it depends. Um, I I just got done saying that build the feud between American Alpha uses, but with the titles on the line, 
I mean, it's as good as a feud as it is, but then who the heck's going to face Slater and Rhino? I mean, it better not be the Usos again, unless it's on, like, SmackDown. I wouldn't be surprised if they do put the Usos in it, though. For the third straight time, then they actually win. I mean, we've seen it yeah. before. I mean, just look at Ziggler Dolph. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, that's later on. This actually... No, so Swagger That's Corbin actually was next. Uh, right after Baron Corbin. Jackson. Swagger Corbin was next, and Baron Corbin won. He got the revenge on Swagger because Swagger won on SmackDown the previous week. And this is the piss, this is another piss pick match. Nothing special about it to me. Just a match. Yep. Could have solved on SmackDown. I yep. mean, then it was the Intercontinental Championship match, which was I thought for sure was going to be the main event. Main event, the last match on because yep. the. the the stipulation and the emotion in the match. Career versus... Uh, Career versus title match. Title. That's a main event quality, but... Nope. Fourth, fourth, fifth match on, whatever. Definitely not the main event. But it felt like a main event. Dolph Ziggler won. Uh, he, I'm not happy with the result. You know I like The Miz so much. I did enjoy how they went about doing it. The storytelling in it. Because The Miz tried like three different ways to actually... Like dirty tactics to win the match. He did the uncovered turnbuckle. Maurice sprayed him and Dolph in the face. And then the Spear Squad came out. Which of all people, they're still keeping around because Ziggler faced him in a two-on-one handicap match last night. <laughs> yep. So, but I mean, he kept trying all these dirty tactics, but Ziggler kept fighting out of it, like willing himself on. And it, great storytelling. He's fighting him for his career, and it really showed with that. He's getting cheated, but he's still making mm-hmm. it happen. And, and then he ends up hitting that super kick with no boot on, <laughs> which was a, mm-hmm. I, I felt like it was a weird thing to win it. He overcame the odds, extends his that. That career now, which, oh well, I mean, that's how it goes, I guess. That's what it is. The match after the pit, another piss break, Naomi ended up taking on Alexa Bliss because Becky Lynch did not compete for some reason, some unrelated wrestling in- injury or whatever. Uh, Bliss cut a promo saying that Becky's weak for not defending her title. I thought she'd, she should have came out and be like, it's my title, she's not here, I win by forfeit. Yeah. I, I, I would have liked that, I would have quite enjoyed that. Uh, Naomi came out to face her, and Naomi won, which I'm really surprised about. You had yeah, your number one contender you, lose. Why, exactly. Why would you bury the number one contender if you're still going to have him face a champion like you know, in another month? doesn't make any doesn't sense. doesn't make any sense at all. I agree. And then your actual main event now, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, which they hyped up the entire night, which I guess you could... They've been hyping it up for the past couple weeks on SmackDown. They've been hyping it up a lot, and Bray Wyatt actually wins a pay-per-view match. As Thank usual, God. but as usual, he needs someone to help him win it. As Luke Harper returns randomly, as I said last week, the only reason he returns is because of Eric Rowan injury. Yes, as I said, because they wanted last to keep week. the Wyatt family thing going on, which is so done out. Yeah, and it's only one person. It's not really a family; it's just friendship. <laughs> I get, yeah, I guess just a follower. Say that. He's just a henchman, just yeah. henchman after henchman. He just distracts Randy basically by standing in the ring, and I mean. It's, I, I said this to my brother when we were watching it. Uh, it's The same thing happened last year against Roman Reigns. Luke Harper returned and helped at Wyatt hell in a cell. win. Not at Hell in a Cell. The one before that would have been... Night of Champions. Night of Champions, whatever it was. But he helped... He, Harper That's helped true. Wyatt win against Roman that same way. He yeah. came back, super kicked Roman, and then he won. So the same exact thing happened again, so... Shows you what WWE tries to do because I always think you forget, but some people we remember. It's, uh, it's not that's not really a big thing. It's this is obviously just Harper's included just because Rowan's out. Yeah, I think you sh- would have been on Raw otherwise. Yeah, honestly. I mean, like I said to you before we started recording here, one of us was going to be right because yeah, if he obviously. didn't if he didn't go the SmackDown, he'd be on Raw. So, um, yeah. Strowman had another jobber match though. I but. feel like he might have been his partner. I And the thing that reinforced my belief is that Luke Harper actually made his return to in-ring action on a live show, a Raw live show. Yeah, he teamed week, with Kevin Owens. The week before, In yes. Santiago, Chile. Yes. And he teamed with Kevin Owens. Yes. Against Rollins and Sami Zayn. So yes. So, that's why... I, I, that might have been before or after I made that prediction, but either way... I think, I think it before. was... I thought it was right after. Right after or before or something. But either way, it reinforced that, so... This is definitely just like a last second. Eric Rowan's out. We're keeping this Wyatt family thing going. Luke Harper's the guy now. Mm-hmm. And Luke Harper always was the best one of the Wyatt family anyway. I mean, as the henchman, definitely as the henchman. Yeah. But as a whole, too, he's the best overall wrestler. He is. Because, I mean, he had... He has just a, like a wide range of offense that he can perform. He's just a better worker, honestly. Because all the things he can do in the ring is just 
I mean, you never see him cut a promo, though, hardly. He says a few words and he he gives the mic to Wyatt. That's what I said. He just says a couple things and gives the mic to Bray, and that's it. So he hasn't really had the ability to show himself as a true singles guy. He did have an Intercontinental Championship run when he first... When he was a heel. I mean, he's naturally a heel with his character, but... Well, he was even... Because he joined the authority. He joined the authority, yeah. Yeah. When he first was a singles competitor, and he just basically got the title because of it. But... Either way, uh, I think it's a good time to take a break now. And when we yeah. come back, we'll uh, get into some football college in the NFL. Do you like hunting, fishing, or talking about the outdoors? If so, you need to check out Downriver Outdoors, an outdoors channel on YouTube that brings you some of the best footage of hunting and fishing from the backwoods of central PA. They also tell some great outdoors stories. Be sure to subscribe to Downriver Outdoors on YouTube. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're going to get into some football. And as always, we're going to start with some college football. And last week, uh, pretty down week for us on the picks. We'll get to that when we get to our picks, actually. But uh, either way, a lot of, a lot of, I think I'd say a lot of close games, a lot of more shocking games, possibly. But as we typically do, we'll get this thing started off, our little review. Uh, the biggest upset of the week, Luke. Had been Navy over Houston, but I picked Navy, so it wasn't an upset for me. Not for you. Um... Ranking-wise, there was, again, Virginia Tech beat North Carolina 34-3. to As I said, they would blow them out. Um, they did Florida State over Miami. We both picked Miami. Uh, but those uh, Florida State-Miami games are always close. Typical game uh, this weekend between those two teams. But the biggest upset for me, and I uh, believe for you as well, um, had to have been Washington State going to Stanford to the farm and beating the Cardinal to hand them their second straight loss. Not just beating, crushing. They did. Uh, it was 42-16, to 16, I believe the final score was. Yes. Stanford's Something in like trouble. That. Christian McCaffrey's career, yes, career might be over. Um, not just at Stanford, but overall in football. Um, Christian McCaffrey will not be a good running back in the NFL, mark my words. Um, when he gets drafted to whatever team he gets drafted to, unless it's the Pittsburgh Steelers or your New Orleans Saints, Come back and listen to episode 27 across the goal line, and uh, you can hear what I just said. He's not going to be a good running back in the NFL. He might be a good return man, but that's it. Um, David Shaw might want to think about packing his bags and uh, leaving now, possibly to LSU. Um, And then speaking of the Pac-12, Washington, who Stanford lost to the week before, as of right now, will be representing the Pac-12, neither is what we call a football playoff. Or the Pac-12 might not get anyone in the playoff if Washington loses. Um, if Washington does lose, they probably still will play in the Rose Bowl because they'll have that tiebreaker over uh, Stanford because the rest of the Pac-12 is not shaping up um, there are to, a couple teams to what are people had thought at the beginning of the season. But, yeah, Colorado is good. USC's um, all right. Um, I mean, record-wise, Arizona State and Utah are both 5-1. and one. Yes. Cal's so, in there as well. Cal's but a good team as well. still early. You know, yes. it, it's only week six uh, that just got over week seven this week. Um, so, yeah, the Pac-12, they're they're a little shaky right now. Not As I said, not uh, what people thought uh, the conference would be at the beginning of the season, in my opinion. Um, you want me to get into the best game now? Uh, I mean, yeah, my two upsets were Navy and Hughes, over Houston and okay. Washington State over Stanford. So, yeah, the best game, which we're both in agreement on, yeah. I do believe. Texas A&M beating Tennessee in double overtime. Yeah, um, but what about that Michigan Rutgers game? You know, um, no, that was an ass open. Michigan had 600 total yards when Rutgers only had 39 total yards. Okay, big difference, huge difference, as Donald Trump would say. Uh, Michigan had 23 first downs. Rutgers had, Rutgers had two, but yeah, I agree with you. Tennessee A&M was the best game. Went to double overtime. Uh, Tennessee was down 14 with 3.22 left, and they came back and tied the game. Um, then that Florida State-Miami game, as I said a little bit ago, got interesting at the end. Typical game between those two teams. Um, you know, Florida State won because they blocked an extra point. Um, but other than that, I didn't think there was any other good games. I mean, when you look at the that's like the implications and the rankings of the two teams, it was a huge game in general to begin with, and then is exciting so i mean just the entirety of the game like just the situational like two really good teams going against each other it was it was called game day for crying out loud yeah i mean so it was obviously probably 
Corso, Lee Corso is four and two on the year now for college game day picks for the host city that they're in. He picked Texas A&M. All right, but yeah, I mean, two really good teams going at it. Labeled as probably one of the best games going into the weekend, and ends up being one of the best yeah. games of the weekend. So and that's what you want to see. You don't want to see any, yeah. um, you know, blowouts or. I didn't um, watch this. I I did watch it. I was between that and in Arkansas, Alabama. But then I realized Alabama was crushing. So yeah. And then I moved on to that. But they were down twenty-one seven at halftime or something like that. Came back again. I yep. mean Tennessee keeps doing it. I mean, <laughs> their luck just ran out. Ran out there. It did run know, out the there. End. Josh Dobbs threw an interception. Um, in the second overtime and sealed the victory for the Aggies. All right. Speaking of blowouts, um, impressed. Michigan yes. wash and impressed me. They blew out uh, Rutgers and Oregon, both on the road. But anytime a team scores 70 points, I don't care who you play, it's impressive. Um, but Penn State did as well. Um, they beat Maryland 38 14. I knew they had a chance. I mean, every team has a chance. Um, a 50-50 chance, that is, at the start of a game, but I didn't think they'd play that well against the Terps. Um, so other than that, there wasn't really any impressive teams because uh, A&M, A&M could have blew them out because um, they were up, as you said, and they let Tennessee come back. It went to double overtime, as we said. So other than that, no other team's impressed. But any time a score, team scores 70-plus points, I mean, they blew both teams out, Oregon and Rutgers, as I said. It's impressive. Yeah, I have watched it on there as well because they absolutely destroyed Oregon yeah. after destroying Stanford, which we thought was a huge deal. But now it doesn't look so much as a big deal after Stanford lost this week to, to Washington, Washington State. State so, uh, But I, I threw in Virginia Tech crushing UNC. I mean, you expected it, but I wasn't yep. expecting it. But... I mean, showing showing me something there. I mean, UNC is a good team on the road as well. I mean, the wet conditions the did help in I the rain because UNC looked. I watched some of that game and it was bad. UNC was looking really bad. North Carolina was looking really bad. They slipped. Some guy dropped the ball, and then the next play on the punt, botched the punt, yeah. and oh my goodness, it was it was some hot garbage, as some would say. But uh, either way, Virginia Tech a disappointed. I think we're in agreement for the most part. Stanford getting crushed at home to Washington State. Yeah, Stanford, uh, they lost two straight now uh, to both Washington schools. Um, how, they were away the first week and then uh, they're home this past they got week. got crushed in two straight weeks. Exactly. I mean, it's a, for a team that they scored, went They scored year. 22 points in the past two games. Yeah. I mean, look, last year they went and dominated in the Rose Bowl. Now look at them. They're, yeah. It's kind of slumping now, I mean. Um, but then Michigan Maybe State. Maybe the dominoes fall because you're you're about to say Michigan State. Yeah, Michigan State disappointed, and they're in the college football playoff last year. For God's sakes, Iowa is in that Rose Bowl. They they're not. Lose. They're not doing that hard. They lost right their now. quarterback, of course. They did. Um, but Michigan State disappointed this past week too. Lost three straight now. Maybe Mark Antonio should think about that LSU gig. I don't know. I'm just turning it out there. Um, and then Notre Dame too, but. They've disappointed really. all year. They haven't looked good and all year. And then they very disappoint much. every year. They're two and four for the first time since two thousand seven, um, when Charlie Weiss was a still was still uh, the Fighting Irish's head coach, and he actually just got uh, his final paycheck at the end of two thousand fifteen. Um, so he was fired after the two thousand eight season. So a gap of um, two thousand nine season, excuse me, a six year gap. He was still getting paid by Notre Dame for not even being their head coach. And then he went to Kansas, <clears throat> got fired by there because they sucked, and he was still getting paid by Kansas. He's getting all his uh, money for not even coaching a football team. Um, but maybe Brian Kelly should go to LSU. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? L- that LSU gig is, um, is uh, what's the right word I want to use? Um, it's intimidating, I guess you could say. It's in the SEC West. SEC, yeah. Um, but also, I mean, it's going to be a hotbed for prospective coaches to flock to, I think, yes. though. Because some coaches want to be a part of that competition and want to show yep. that they can be a part of the, And maybe make LSU good. <laughs> again, Great again. At, to quote Donald Trump here. Make LSU, LSU great, great again. again. <laughs> to quote Donald Trump. All right, we'll leave it at that for um, yeah, going to picks now. week six. Uh, recap week seven now. As many people know, we like to start with the FCS. 
I went 4-0 for the second straight week. Corey went 4-0 last week as well. I'm 16-3 and on the year. He's 15-4 and on the year. Four games again this week. Um, James Madison at New Hampshire. Who you got? James Madison, New Hampshire. I uh, don't know much. I'll go... I don't know James Madison. James Madison. You're going to go James Madison. I'm going to also pick uh, James Madison. <clears throat> I'm going to pick uh, the Dukes to uh, beat uh, Brian Kelly. Uh, Brian Kelly's old team. He coached in New Hampshire in the SCS um, before his FBS days when he coached for Cincinnati and now Notre Dame. I also coached at Central Michigan, too. <clears throat> Chattanooga at the Citadel. Both teams are undefeated. Chattanooga 6-0. Citadel's 5-0. I'm going to pick Citadel. They always play um, a lot of FBS teams, always get blown out, but they get money for it. Um, Citadel's playing at home. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to have to go to the Citadel. Uh, yeah, I'll go Citadel as well. All right, you just want to copy me again? Um, South Coast State and North Coast State. Um, North Coast State's just too damn good. Yep, North Coast State. So, Bison in that one. Uh, and then Villanova at Richmond in, the, in another CAA game. The James Madison, New Hampshire game is a CAA game. Um, <clears throat> Richmond beat Albany last week in three overtimes, 36-30. to 30. We both picked Richmond last week. Um, and I'm going to pick Richmond again. Uh, both teams are real good, but uh, Richmond's playing at home. I'm going to take the Spiders. You know me. It's the home team. All right, good enough. Four... Uh, what do I want to say for the th- probably the second or third straight week we both picked the same teams in the FCS oh well anyways FBS we both went 5-6 and six last week LSU Florida was postponed due to Hurricane Matthew I'm 41-34 in year now in year 40 40 I think we said 47 yeah 47 28 no oh, 28 yeah, yeah 47 and 28 not 22 cool <clears throat> Trying to, Point out run a, good. trying to run a fast one by me there, Corey. Um, first one, ACC matchup, noon o'clock. Noon, noon o'clock. Noon, noon. noon o'clock. That's a new one for me. Um, noon Eastern time uh, from Death Valley in Clemson. It, NC State goes to Clemson um, to play the Tigers. NC State beat Notre Dame last week, 10-3. Uh, and, you know, a rain game, I guess you could say. The conditions are awful. They won on a blocked punt because it was tied 3-3 after a weather delay from that rain from Hurricane Matthew and um, beat Notre Dame 10-3 on that blocked punt. So, But Clemson's playing at home. You're just uh, too good. Uh, I'm going to have to pick Clemson. Absolutely Clemson. I mean, Absolutely Clemson. Absolutely Clemson. Right. Clemson. I, have, I have zero doubt in this pick. All Probably right. the only time I've ever said Well, not the only time I've ever said that. But during, this, <laughs> during these picks, but yeah. All right. This uh, week's pick is my guarantee is Clemson. Your guarantee is Clemson. All right. We should start doing that. Guarantee picks and uh, whatnot. You want to start it this week then? You're <laughs> fine. Fine. I, I, just, I come in here and I spawn the idea. You now. did. Um, so your guarantee pick is Clemson. Let me look through my list right now. Um, list of games. Yeah, to, just think of it now and then say when you get there. Yeah. Yeah. Because it might be this game, it might and it might uh, not be till later here. Um, all right, I know what I'm going with. All right, next game though is in the SEC. Could could be uh, could have been a, a site for College Game Day again. We talked about it last week. Alabama's going to Knoxville to play Tennessee, but since Tennessee lost A and M in double overtime last week, um, College Game Day is up in Madison now, as we said possibly uh, last week as well for Ohio State Wisconsin we'll get to that here in a minute that's our last game of the week but Alabama goes to Tennessee they went to Fayetteville last week and beat Arkansas by 19 uh, Tennessee as we said lost to AM double overtime, time 45 38 so um, Tennessee's playing at home but Alabama's just too damn good Alabama again roll tide uh, yeah it's, it is a tough game on paper at least looking at it but Alabama has proven time and time this season that they are the best team in the country you know it's true a couple of played a couple of good teams here from the SEC this is definitely the probably the toughest challenge uh, at least ranking wise for them they did beat Ole Miss just barely by just a single possession a couple weeks ago on the road Mm -hmm. there but uh, another tough road game but Tennessee their luck ran out last week when they came trying to make their comebacks and I think the dominoes might start to fall here and Tennessee will start maybe lose this game and 
who knows from there. So Alabama. They might still represent the SEC East yeah, in so. the SEC Championship game. So this might be um, a preview to a rematch come December because the SEC yeah. East isn't looking so hot. you still got Florida and Georgia, but yeah, you know those two, those teams will all play each other by the end of the season. Um, I mean, I would like to see Alabama lose that number one ranking and then have Ohio State win because then Ohio State would be number one coming into Happy Valley next week. And then Penn State would get their opportunity at the number one team in the country on their home turf uh, in front of the whole country on ABC, 8 o'clock in primetime next uh, Saturday night, October 22nd. Um, but we'll get to Ohio State here in a minute, as I said. Next game, Western Michigan. They're undefeated. They're ranked 24th in the country. P.J. Fleck, head coach, doing a uh, phenomenal job uh, for the Broncos. Um, he might be a candidate for the LSU job. He's doing a fantastic job. Might be a you know, candidate for, say, Houston if Tom Herman leaves or, you know, Notre Dame or Florida State if Brian Kelly, uh, Jimbo Fisher leave or, hell, maybe even Penn State if Penn State gets rid of James Franklin. He's kept his job for another two weeks, uh, you know, after he had that overtime winning against Minnesota and then they, you know, pretty much blew out Maryland. Um Maybe Oregon because, um, oh, what the hell is his name in Oregon? Uh, took over for Chip Kelly. Um, I can't think of it at the moment, and Corey's not helping me out. Uh, anyways, he might be a candidate for the Oregon job. Maybe USC if they don't want to, you know, if they want to make another coaching uh, change because um, after Steve Sarkeesian. I forget what their head coach's name is, too, and now I'm having a brain freeze. Um, anyways, P.J. Fleck, I don't think he's going to be with Western Michigan next year is what I'm trying to say. I think he'll be, you know, uh, somewhere else uh, coaching. But they play at Akron. I've seen Akron play a number of times when they played at Penn State. Penn State's beaten them every single time. These This is a MAC matchup. We've Our first MAC matchup of the season. Uh, might be our last. We'll have to see uh, if it's a if there are any other good games uh, come the end of the season. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if Akron gets the upset. Western Michigan's undefeated, as I said, ranked twenty fourth in the country. But Western Michigan is just too Western Michigan is just too good. So I'm gonna have to take Western Michigan over the Akron Zips. A game like this, yeah, I can definitely expect an upset. But you're talking here. I mean, I don't know much about Western Michigan. You've enlightened me, so I'm here today. Yeah. So I'm going to have to go with Western Michigan, I guess. I mean, I guess they have proven themselves. They're ranked now, so, I mean, hey. First time since uh, the 1960s, I believe, the first time they're ranked. Um, Wake Forest, team I talked about a couple weeks ago in the ACC, uh, that could win their uh, division, is going to Florida State to play uh, the Seminoles after Florida State's coming off a win against Miami last week. Um, the winner of this game will obviously uh, be playing Clemson by the end of the year and um, yeah, they'll be playing Clemson by the end of the year and then the winner of that Clemson game whatever one it may be will be playing in the ACC championship game more than likely so um, you know we've got two to three games uh, to decide that because the rest of that ACC uh, division, I believe it's the Atlantic, it just sucks. Uh, no offense, but it just sucks. Um, the teams are. Uh, it's the coastal. It's the coastal. I think it is the Atlantic coastal. coastal whatever. I think the Atlantic it is. has Clemson. So. Um. Well, all these teams are in the same division, so. Um. Whatever one it is, they'll be representing uh, that. Uh, all right that part in the championship game, which actually just got moved from Charlotte, North Carolina to Orlando, Florida, uh, too, by the way, throw that in there. Um, So that Florida State-Clemson game, you know, coming up uh, at the end of October might be interesting, or that Wake uh, Forest-Clemson game might be interesting. just depends on the outcome of this Wake Forest-Florida State game. And I'm going to take Florida, excuse me, I'm going to take Wake Forest over Florida State uh, in an upset. Like, Uh, that's my upset for this week. I mean... It's not a really shocking upset if it does happen. I mean, Florida State, they are a, they're an interesting team, I would have to say. They they go one week, they lose a game that they probably shouldn't, and they come back, and they win a game where they maybe shouldn't have won. Who knows? I mean, 
They've been doing it all year. Yeah. I mean, you never know with Florida State. I'm tempted to pick them at home. Mm. Screw it, I will. I'll pick Florida State. You're going to take, take Florida State, all right. Yeah, because as you said, they've been up and down. Um, they count, They came back from uh, 28 uh, against uh, Ole Miss opening week, opening weekend, and then they, you know, uh, lost to North Carolina, and then they beat Miami. Lost somebody else too. Yeah, like, crushed I, by the, Louisville. Yeah, that, that Louisville game when they were ranked two. That, exactly. Um, so well, then they got crushed them. Then they came back and beat someone. Then they lost North Carolina. Then they come back this week. They beat Miami. So, so who knows? You never know. You anything. never know with Florida State right now. So um, that's why I'm going to take another reason why I'm going to take Wake Forest. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Speaking of North Carolina and Miami, North Carolina goes to Miami this week. Um, another ACC matchup. I picked Miami last week uh, against Florida State. Typical game between those two teams, as I said now for the third time. I think Miami gets uh, gets this uh, gets this win, and then they might be uh, playing in the ACC championship game. And hell, they might even be uh, in the college football playoff come the end of the year because they're sitting right about 15 right now. And I saw an interesting stat last night. One team. After week six, that is in the top four, only one team in that top four will make the college football playoff. Right now, you have Alabama, Clemson. Ohio State and Michigan. Yeah, Ohio State and Michigan. Not in that order. It's Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, and then Michigan. Ohio State and Michigan are going to play each other at the end of the year. So one of them will... One of them is obviously going to lose. And then Michigan, they play at Iowa and Michigan State... Those games are not, you know, looking as bad for the Wolverines now. Iowa and Michigan State are both down. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Ohio State's probably going to run the table. Uh, they do play at Madison this week uh, in Wisconsin to play the Badgers. And then they come here to Happy Valley to play Penn State. Um, so two tough road games at night, two weeks in a row. So they might lose one of those, too. Hopefully next week when they come here to Penn State. Um, but uh, we'll have to see. But Miami, as I said, they're sitting about 15 right now. And one of those teams that's from 10 to 20 will make the playoff by what history says the past two years for the college football playoff. So Miami might be one of those teams. And they only have one loss. That Florida State loss last week by one point because Florida State blocked, blocked the extra point. So... Who knows? Miami might be playing the college football playoff come uh, come the end of December, January. Hell, they might be even. They might have a short trip to Tampa to play in the national championship game. Be a um, fantastic job by Mark Richt if if that all can happen, and then he'd say screw you to Georgia one more time and uh, raise that national championship. But um, I'm gonna pick Miami, as I said. I picked them last week in Florida State. They didn't win because of that blocked extra point, but they're playing at home again. North Carolina, um, I think they'll score more points than what they did last week against Virginia Tech at home. They only scored three. They got blown out, as I said they would. Uh, I think they'll score more points, but I don't think that's enough to um, stop Miami and the Hurricanes. Miami, in a, in a closer one, uh, in a close closer uh, than the experts uh, think game. So All Miami right. over North Carolina. I will say it. Probably will be close. Uh, I will go Miami. They are at home. Uh, North Carolina did not look that good last week, obviously, getting blown up by Virginia Tech. You can blame the rain, but, I mean, that's just an excuse, obviously. So, yeah. And, like you said, Miami, they only barely lost last week. They got blocked extra point. I mean, you're just one play away from With winning overtime. So. a minute left, Yeah, you know, so. in the game. So, I mean, docking that goes through. They go to overtime. Maybe they win that game. Who knows? So... But, yeah, I'll go Miami in this one. All right. Um, yeah, because with that, you play a game of what ifs. You know, what if this, what if that. But next game, Arkansas, who I picked the upset Alabama last week. They didn't get the job done. They lost by 19 at home. Alabama just got off to uh, a fast start, and then they couldn't. Arkansas couldn't catch up. Ole Miss goes to Fayetteville, though. Ranked versus ranked game. Uh, there's three ranked versus ranked uh games this week. Uh, the first being Alabama-Tennessee, uh, this Ole Miss-Arkansas game, and then the Ohio State-Wisconsin game, as we'll get to here in another second. 
um, as I've said already. But um, real interesting because, as, a, as we said last week too, it was like the fourth or fifth straight week there was four ranked versus ranked uh, uh, games, and now there's only three this week. So it had been real interesting to see if there's another one this week, but there's not. But as I said, Arkansas lost to Alabama by 19. Alabama got off to a fast start. Uh, Arkansas can put up points. They only have two losses to Texas A&M and Alabama. Those are two pretty good uh, uh, losses, I would say. Um, so Arkansas is going to be a good ass bowl game. You know, coming the end of the year, if they can uh, finish strong, and I think they uh, play strong this week against the Rebs. They beat Ole Miss at home. Yeah, you said Arkansas has only those couple losses, not really bad losses. You can say the same thing for Ole Miss. They barely lost to Alabama. And as it stands right now, it's not a terrible loss to Florida State. The way they did lose is, but yeah, it's not a terrible loss at the moment, the way Florida State is at the moment. So, I mean, Ole Miss got, got themselves back up to 12 now, as I saw. They're 12th ranked now. Yeah, Arkansas is 23, I believe, for 22. I think, it's, I think it was 22 I saw. But, uh... This is, this is another tough game to pick, big SEC game. Oh, hell, Ole Miss could be that one team that maybe makes a run, possibly. I mean, it depends how everyone yeah, else does. Those true. two losses aren't... Go back to what I said about Miami, that is true. Those two losses aren't pretty, obviously, but if some lose, then yeah, I mean, it's sort of their contention if they can win the SEC or something, you know. I mean... They're going to have Alabama lose. They obviously do. Uh, they're going to have Texas A&M lose. And Alabama and A&M play each other next week, so one of those teams is obviously going to lose. Um, and then Alabama still has to play Auburn. Um, <clears throat> still got to play the Iron Bowl, you know. Yeah. That, anything can happen in that game. Yeah, exactly. Hell, a couple years ago, that, they had that 109 uh, kick six return for a touchdown. And, it, <clears> you <throat> and then national go championship ahead. win, pretty much. Field oh, yeah. The national championship yeah. game. So. And then um, A&M's, A&M still has a tough schedule ahead of them as well after that Alabama game. So um, Ole Miss could... Could still win the SEC West. That, that I mean, that is, that's not a, that's not a far reach. I guess you could say. Um, now that I think about it, so. Did you pick? Did you pick winner? I think I'm gonna go. Ed, no, nah, I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Ole Miss. Gonna go <laughs> You're gonna Ole go Miss. Ole Miss. All right. I'm gonna go because of what you just said. Kind of, yeah. I'm feeling. Right. I'm gonna stick with them after I said that. I don't want to like. Just like <laughs> yeah, you don't want to say all that and then, you know, go bury them after you say all that, you know. So, yeah. All right. Ole Miss. You got Ole Miss, I got Arkansas in that game. Uh, Corey says the Clemson win over NC State will be his lock. My lock this week is going to be Houston over Tulsa. Yeah, I guess it's Tulsa, um, their only loss, their 4 and 1, was to Ohio State uh, in week two. And then Houston lost to I Navy so last week. Well, week two so. Huh? I could have sworn it was Oklahoma that crushed no, Tulsa week two. No, Ohio State beat Tulsa. Go look it up, people. Um, and then uh, Houston lost to uh, Navy last week, which I said they would, um, but I think they get back on track. Houston might be a you know team that could still get into the playoff. Not being a no, Power no. 5 uh, and a Power 5 conference is going to be even harder than, let's say, Ole Miss or Miami because they're still between that 10 and 20. Um for ranking wise, um, but with Na- if Navy, you know who knows they run the triple option for God's sakes. Um, if they uh, lose some games, it's going to be bad. And then Lu- you still got Louisville. Louisville plays Clemson. That's going to make Louisville even look worse, especially with a loss to Clemson. It, you know, all the dominoes are just going to fall in the wrong direction for all uh, all of those teams. Uh, but my lock is going to be Houston over Tulsa this week. I'm definitely going to pick Houston. That's another one that could have been a lock for me as well, I guarantee. But I'll go with Clemson. I don't have the list in front of me as I, I couldn't go down and see that game. But, yeah, it's definitely a guarantee-worthy game right there, Houston over Tulsa. All right, next. Perfect game on paper at the beginning of the year. Still a perfect game on paper. It's Stanford at Notre Dame. Two good teams, two historic uh, programs – with the Fighting Irish and the Cardinal, but you know both teams are struggling right now. Stanford's lost two straight. Notre Dame's two and four, um, lost two of their last three. So after they fired the defense coordinator, so um, I do like Christian McCaffrey still. 
going back to what I said earlier, he's just not going to be a good running back in the NFL. Um, he'll still be good here when he's at Stanford, but come NFL, he's not going to be good. Because um, look at Johnny Manziel, of all people, in recent years. Look at Tim Tebow, of all people, in recent years. Good quarterbacks at Florida and, ten- and Texas A&M. Go to the NFL, they suck. You know, they're both not even playing in the league anymore. Hell, Tebow's playing baseball. You know, so... Um, I'm not saying McCaffrey's going to be playing baseball five years after he's uh, drafted, but you know, uh, Notre Dame's just not good. Notre Dame's just uh, not good right now. Uh, Stanford big over Notre Dame. Brian Kelly might get fired. He might want to leave um, at the end of the season if he doesn't. As I said a little bit ago. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna. I'm gonna go Stanford in this one. They are definitely the better of the two teams here. I do like your sentiment of big over Notre Dame. I can definitely see that happening. Uh, but yeah, this just, game is always close, though. Yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, exciting to watch at seven thirty on NBC Saturday night. Um, it it is a kind of a must watch, not in terms of the college football playoff at all, obviously anymore. I don't think unless Stanford really does something impressive. Down they the need stretch. people to lose. Yes, and they need Washington and Washington State to win, but then. Especially with Washington being the top five, yeah. if they went out, Washington has a tiebreaker over Stanford, so that just doesn't add I mean, up. The only reason Washington's not in the top four right now is because of the top four teams are still looking yeah. impressive. So, I mean, you couldn't take any of those teams out and add in Washington as it stands. So, but I mean, yeah, Stanford in this one. I, I'm just going back to that Stanford in this one over <clears> Notre Dame. All right, speaking of a must-watch game. Uh, Ohio State goes to Camp Randall to play Wisconsin Saturday night, 8 o'clock, uh, ABC primetime. Kirk Herbstreit, uh, Chris Fowler will have a call. College game day is also on site. Um, as I said, Ohio State plays at Wisconsin this week and then at Penn State next week. Both games on ABC at 8 o'clock. Um, I think a whiteout is uh, harder to play in than... Camp Randall come fourth quarter time when they play jump around, but um, both places are tough places to play. I would like to see Wisconsin beat Ohio State this week, but I would really love to see Penn State kick Ohio State's ass next Saturday night. Um, so, if Ohio State beats Wisconsin this week, um, they can lose next week. But if Wisconsin beats them, that means they will win against Penn State because they'll, they'll be on revenge be on a revenge trip. So, Ohio State over Wisconsin in a real close one, going to be decided by less than five points. Um, Last time these two teams met in Camp Randall, though, Wisconsin blew out Ohio State when Terrell Pryor was still playing for the Buckeyes. He's tearing it up for the Cleveland Browns now, um, somewhat for uh, that playing wide receiver. He had to go in a quarterback there for a little bit uh, for a play or two this past week. But, Ohio State in a close one over Wisconsin, and then Ohio State comes to Penn State next week and loses. All right. It's going to be a fun, exciting game to watch. It will be. Classic uh, Big Ten matchup. As I said, it's going to be close. I think it's going to be low scoring, too. I think it's going to be like a 20-17 to 17 game, 20-16 to you know 16 maybe because I said less than five points. Um, it's going to be deciding – it's going to be decided in the fourth quarter with less than five minutes to get too. You definitely see that happening. This is going to, this is probably the toughest game to pick of the entire list that we got. Oh, and for sure. Because for sure this week, yeah. Both these teams can clearly go. Ohio State. Ohio State hasn't really. This is their real first real big test of the season, though, for sure. Yeah. So it will be interesting how to, to see how they adapt to that, how they deal with that. Because I mentioned it the week or two ago, yeah, two weeks now, when Michigan played Wisconsin. Yeah, we did that. We picked that game, obviously, and I, that's what I was saying. I was saying Michigan, how are they got to handle. It? They handled it pretty well. It was a nice, low scoring game, fourteen to seven. But of course, Michigan was at Michigan. home. Yeah, this is the biggest thing that's really making this really hard for me is the fact that Wisconsin is at home in this game. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be tough for Ohio State to go in there and win, I think. But um, it's a tough one for me. It's a coin flipper, really, for me, honestly. Yeah. But it it is for me too. But what I had yeah. said, I would like Penn State to beat Wisconsin next week. 
So if Ohio State loses this week to Wisconsin, they'll obviously win next week. Um, but if they win against Wisconsin, they yeah. come to Happy Valley State College University Park next week and they lose. So I agree with everything you're saying too. Yeah, this is this is definitely it's a, a tough huge, one. It is a tough definitely one. a huge game in determining even the college football playoff too because Wisconsin wins this game, they're right in the conversation themselves. Oh yeah, you know Ohio State ranked two right now, and I was just about to ask you a question too after you got done pick, making the pick, and Wisconsin's at eight. Both these teams are going to play Michigan. Wisconsin already did. They lost to him 14-7 in the big house. Good, they did play him real well. Um, but then Ohio State plays Michigan at the end of the season. Yeah. What team do you think – this probably will probably be a better question next week. What team do you think is better right now between Ohio State and Michigan based on how they've played so far? But as I said, it probably would be a better question for next week because this game yeah. hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I didn't think about that before I asked. Oh well. I mean, <coughs> I'd have to say we'll Ohio save, State. We'll save though. it for next week. I'd have to say You'll Ohio still say Ohio State, State because they're doing what top teams need to do, and they're blowing <laughs> out weaker competition. Michigan State, they have a kind Michigan. of a Michigan, Michigan, yeah. Michigan. They had a kind of a close call there. One point Michigan against Colorado. Fan, Michigan fans wouldn't be happy with you, and Michigan State yeah. fans would even would uh, hate you. Yeah, but uh, they had a kind of a close call against Colorado in a game that they should have probably been in a blowout type of game there, but as I've seen from this season, I have to say Ohio State's probably the better of the two between those two teams. All right. So As I said, it probably would be a better question for next week. It would be a better question because I feel like if Ohio State loses this game, then obviously just just by rule of like... Would you say... Would you, you would say Michigan's a better team then, right? I mean, by, obviously because they beat Wisconsin exactly. and they lost to Wisconsin. Exactly. So like just by that rule alone, like... Yeah. I mean, they obviously do, but... As for the actual game this week, I'm going to have to go Ohio State. You're going to go Ohio State, all right. By maybe even less than three three points or less, even. All right. It's going to be close. One. It's going to be a classic big-time matchup, as I said. This and then that, be super, super close or randomly a blowout by Ohio State somehow. I could see one of these teams blowing out the other team, though, too. But, um, because when the Ohio State won the national championship, they blew out Wisconsin the Big Ten championship game. Yes, they did. Different. Different Wisconsin team, though. Definitely. They were coached um, by what's-his-name who is in uh, who's coaching Oregon State now. Um, Gary Anderson is his name. I got one of the three head coaches I, you know, forgot. Um, and they, you know, after the two years after Bielema weren't good for Wisconsin. They were still good in the Big Ten Legends division and then the West. But, um, you know, once Paul Chris, uh, who was... Uh, former staff assistant uh, coach under um, uh, Brett Bielema and um, oh, here's another coach, fourth coach now, Cal, um, for Wisconsin before Bielema. I can't think of his name. Um, help me out, somebody, please let me know on Twitter. Um, I'll think of it and I'll know it by the end of the show and I'll shoot myself for it. Um, anyways, Paul Chris knows what Wisconsin how how to play Wisconsin football. Gary Anderson did it. You know, and then he still like he still had good seasons in Madison, but you know, it's better that he did leave the Big Ten and go to the Pac twelve. Oregon State sucking, but we still wish him the best of luck from uh, other, you know, Big Ten fans. Um but then going back to Wisconsin too that LSU win's not looking that. I was that I was good. I was thinking that because, because they have a couple wins that don't look too good now. Exactly. The LSU game looked great at the beginning of the year cuz LSU was obviously ranked really high and also the Michigan State win. Exactly. Michigan, Michigan State's State lost State three was, straight now. Was looking really good at one point. They got crushed by Wisconsin and now look at them. I yeah. mean, so it's one of those situations where like these wins look good at first but then they don't look as good at the end. So mm-hmm. I mean, that's certainly Wisconsin a little bit right now, but a win against Ohio State would definitely help them. For sure. I mean, so we're both going Bucks. We're going to go Buckeyes, yes. All right. That that ends it for college football. Yep. Um, we're going to go NFL now. Yep. Uh, going to go NFL. A little recap of week five and then preview week six. Yeah, a little recap of week five. We'll go right into it. Biggest upset. I have the Lions beating the Eagles. I mean, the Eagles were undefeated. They were. Like, really close game there. I mean... I mean, it is an upset. The Lions haven't looked particularly great this season. I mean, the Eagles, they were looking good. So, hey, 
it's a minor one, if any. I mean, as I keep saying almost every week, it seems like it's hard to really pick an upset for football unless it's like the Browns over the Patriots. For the NFL. The NFL. College, it's different. Yeah. And we've said that. I know you've said it a lot. I've said it a lot. I agree with you on that just because the Eagles were undefeated for biggest upset, but I really didn't think there was any. Yeah, there really wasn't any upsets. I mean, Falcons over Broncos is not a huge upset. It is. I mean, Broncos at home undefeated, losing to the Falcons, but the Falcons have looked good. So yeah, best offense. But the best you told me won. too, and I forgot because I, t- I totally forgot. Falcons started out five zero last year, and then they're four and one right now, and they didn't even make the playoffs last year. Yep. So it's hard to tell what will happen. Uh, so you don't have an upset, obviously. So best game. Um, I had. I think you said earlier that you didn't really have one either. For that yeah. best game, best game, it really wasn't an end. Thank you. I. I put the Raiders over the Chargers, an exciting game at the end. Chargers failing again in the fourth quarter. They Every their... single game, they're up whatever with two minutes to go. They weren't winning and this game, And they lose. Though. They're 1-4. and four. They could be 4-1. and one. Or, hell, yeah. even undefeated with the Vikings. Yeah. Lost week one to the Chiefs after a huge comeback. But then they crushed the Jaguars, I know. They lost to the Colts late. Lost to the Saints last week by three turnovers in the final however long. But... And then this week, they weren't winning entering the fourth quarter or towards the end of the fourth quarter. They botch a field goal snap, the holder does, and they end up losing. Also, the Colts beating the Bears 29-23. Not really a great game in, like, standings or anything, but it was a good game overall. It was pretty back and forth the entire game before the Colts ended up pulling away at the end. So, those are my two. I know Luke didn't have any. Now, impressed this week... um, I have the Falcons, I already mentioned them, beating Denver 23-16 to in Denver, a team that was undefeated. But they did start Paxton Lynch in his first ever career start. I mean, you can't expect too much out of him, right? The rookie quarterback starting his first game. Because of Trevor against Simeon. Trevor uh, Simeon got hurt. Getting hurt against Tampa Bay. He will be uh, questionable to start as of right now, this Thursday night against uh, San Diego. But go on. I also have the Vikings improving 5-0, and <laughs> crushing the Houston Texans. 31 to 13. Houston started to come back the second half, but it was too late. Yeah, the Houston hasn't looked particularly great pretty much since JJ Wild went down. I mean, I think they've lost a couple games now. Well, they're them. three and two. Their only two losses are the Patriots' loss and the, the Patriots Vikings' and the loss. Vikings. Now. They haven't looked particularly special. I know, I think it was the week prior, they played the, the Titans last week, it was. Yep. And they, they, they won barely, by seven. They, yeah, they barely beat the Titans. 27 to 20. So, I mean. Their offense is, it, it's, it has the weapons, but, I mean, Brock Oswald, the quarterback, has not really panned out, I don't yeah. think, the way that they thought they it would. I didn't for think sure. it was a good signing, and I've said that before. I know I've said it on here. I'm I sure the Texans know I've did, told you. And the funny thing I thought about that was, Bill O'Brien, Texans head coach, he was at a pro day at Wisconsin with J.J. Watt to watch his younger brother, T.J., who is still playing for the Badgers. You can see him this Saturday night. When Ohio State goes to Madison to uh, play Wisconsin. But anyways, uh, he was up there the day, the first day of NFL free agency. And then the Texans signed him. But Bill O'Brien never met with Brock Osweiler to talk football. They just thought he was the best. uh, Everyone else in the Texans organization thought he was the best free agent quarterback, which he probably was. You know, and they gave him a four-year, $72 million deal. Um. So, but as you said, I agree with you. It hasn't panned out as they would like it to have so far. Yeah. Um. But I didn't think he was good in Denver. You know, and I've said that before. Go back and listen to it. I know I've told you that before. Um. What do you add? Impressed? Yeah. Impressed. Everyone knew Tom Brady would probably be uh probably do well on his return from uh, a four game suspension. I mean, they were playing, and they were playing the Cleveland Browns, but still. Um, I expect nothing less. <laughs> but then the Cardinals, too, last Thursday night uh, against San Francisco. Yeah. I ha- originally had the Cardinals, then picked uh, the 49ers because Carson Palmer wasn't playing. But Drew Stanton impressed me as well, quarterback, filling in for Palmer. Palmer's going to be back there this weekend. He was in concussion protocol. So uh, Cardinals and Drew Stanton impressed me um, as a whole, as a whole team, rather than just Tom Brady, because you know, right. everyone knew he'd probably do well yeah. in his return. Disappointed, I don't, I don't really have any for, this, for the reasons that I've been stating. It's kind of hard for disappointing. In, yeah, disappointed. In the NFL. I agree with you. Not really anyone. I thought it was an off, another off weekend uh, in the NFL. Yeah, not a, not a whole if lot of excitement. Anything. I would say this week. It's just pretty a uh, simple week, I guess, in the NFL. 
Moving on now to the next week. We got it's week six in the NFL now. And last week in the picks, both of us went five and four, and we're still at the same. Uh, we're tied in our picks standings now, I guess. What yeah, is it? 24 19 on the year. 24 19. Yep, both the same. So we're both kind of hovering around that 500 mark, just a couple games above, about five games above 500 in our picks. So maybe turn around this week. We had two teams on by this week the Buccaneers and the Vikings. So the Vikings will continue to be undefeated for one more week. So. We got the Thursday night game as the Broncos travel to San Diego to play the Chargers. Uh, I'm going the Broncos. Um, Chargers. Uh, we've already documented this earlier today. I mean, they have just been the worst team in football in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Mike, they've probably been one of the best through three quarters. But you got to play sixty minutes. You got to play sixty minutes. Yeah, uh, Mike McCoy. He'll be uh, looking for a new job. Uh, maybe after this weekend. Maybe coming even come Friday. You know, because they play Thursday night. Um, or by the end of the season, uh, he'll be looking for a new job. He will not be the San Diego Chargers head coach because they cannot finish. They, they're not clutch in the end. Uh, it's, you know, the first 58 minutes of the game, they're totally fine. You know, as you said, three quarters, whatever. Um, the last two minutes, you know, they're up until that point, and then they lose. They're 1-4. and four, They could be 4-1, and one, you know, 5 now, as I said, with the Minnesota Vikings, but they're not. Um Trevor Simeon is, uh, you know, game time decision. He's questionable at the moment. Um, I still like um, Denver, though, if Paxton Lynch, you know, plays. Um, he played well last week uh, against Atlanta. Atlanta a, has a tough defense. Uh, Atlanta goes to Seattle. Dan Quinn, uh, former defense coordinator for the Seahawks. We'll get to that here in a second. Falcons defense is a lot like Seattle's defense when they're um, – good there the past couple years when they're going to back-to-back Super Bowls uh, but um, so uh, Paxton Lynch was making the rookie mistakes you know that every rookie quarterback makes um, but San Diego they're just they're just not clutch they can't finish and that's why I'm going to take Denver I'm going to take Denver so Denver over San Diego on Thursday night alright first game on Sunday that we're going to pick here is the 49ers traveling to Buffalo to play the Bills and the reason it's on here is because Colin Kaepernick is going to get the start for the 49ers here. And it's a battle of O.J. Simpson's former uh, two teams in the National Football League. So that's why I wanted to throw it on here. Yeah. Uh, I you don't really don't care about that uh, that reasoning. That reasoning and, and this game because I think the Bills are going to win this game. I <laughs> yeah, I also have the Bills. Kaepernick's playing. You know, I also have the Bills. I think we should just move on from this game. Okay, good enough. All right. Bills for both of us. Ravens taking on the Giants in uh, New Jersey. Uh, yeah, the Meadowlands. The Meadowlands. Uh, Sorry, I was taking a swig of water. Uh, it should just be a good game in general. Two teams that are, I'd say, pretty average at the moment, but it's going to be a good game nevertheless. Low uh, key game, I think, because it's a good matchup on paper at the beginning yeah. of the year. Both teams are struggling right now. Uh, Baltimore has uh, lost two straight now by less than seven points. Uh, to Oakland and then Washington, both at home. And then they fire their offense coordinator, Mark Tressman, the other day, former head coach for the Chicago Bears. Um, but low-key game, I think, yeah. Low-key game. I'm going to go Giants and go with that home field advantage, I guess. You're going to go Giants. I have a friend who is a Baltimore Ravens fan. Um, I don't really want to pick the Ravens because they are rivals with the Steelers. But uh, the Giants and the Ravens are both in the same boat right now, you know. Um, Giants won week one, but they haven't won since. Um, well, they did beat the Saints, right? They did. They did beat the Saints, two wins, excuse me. So, um, low scoring, I think it might be a lot like that Saints game. It might be, might be the same exact score, 16-13. to 13. Uh, We'll have to see. But I'm going to take Baltimore. All right. All right, we have the Panthers taking on the Saints in New Orleans. And... I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers, mostly because I think this is a desperation game for the Panthers as a whole. And I know, Luke, you disagree with me with this, but I think if they lose this game to New Orleans, that Ron Rivera is in deep trouble as coach of the Carolina Panthers. He he is in trouble, but what, what, what the one thing I disagree with you on about this is you think they're going to fire him if he loses this game. I think they don't fire him until the end of the season, or they might even keep him. So, I am going to pick New Orleans, though, to win. Uh, 
because uh, both teams are one and four. Must it's a must win for both teams, really. Obviously, um, but yeah, the one thing the the thing I disagree with you on is you think they're going to fire him after this game, but um, it is what it is. If he gets fired, he gets fired. You know, he'll be coaching somewhere else next year, either as an assistant or head coach. Maybe even go to the call drinks, you know, and coach somewhere for one of those good uh, good schools that will obviously have a job opening at the at the end of the season. All right. Uh, AFC West matchup, second of the week. Uh, Chiefs take on the Raiders in Oakland. Uh, I'm gonna go Oakland at home. It's a this is a coin toss game for me. It's probably the uh, well, I guess it wouldn't now that I look at them again. Uh, one of the toughest games this week for me to pick. The Raiders have looked good in pretty much every game this season. They have the one loss to Atlanta. Uh, by we, seven points. By just seven points. They were playing at home, came down to Hail Mary. I mean, they've been looking good all year. Chiefs, that last time we saw them, looked terrible against the Steelers on Sunday night. Coming so, off a bye. Coming off a bye. Uh, I guess I will say Andy Reid coming off a bye is one of the best he ever. Is. I agree. So that kind of might sway me. I just thought of that now. I just remembered that. But I will go Raiders at home in the Coliseum. Just win, baby. As, Al, as Al Davis would right. uh, famously say. I'm going to get Oakland. They're 4-1. and Best start since 2002 when they went to the Super Bowl last time they were in the playoffs, actually. And I have them in the playoffs this year, so um, i got to have them win. So, just win. All right. Another pretty good game on the lineup here. As the Falcons head to Seattle to take, take on the Seahawks. This is another game for me I have a tough time picking. And I'm going to go Seahawks uh, at home because, I mean, Seattle is definitely one of the, the hardest places to play in the NFL. And Seattle has kind of turned it around after the first – yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. I, I didn't put that in. I thought we took it out. Well, you just if, you, if you want to pick it, you can pick it. But okay. I, I was just showing him something. Yeah. That's it, why he uh, stumbled, well, yeah, but, stuttered, uh, stopped, and whatnot. If you, uh, want, if you want to pick it, we can. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, you just showed me that Bengals Patriots. I, I thought we took that out. You can take have, it out. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm yeah. gonna take the Patriots anyway. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd take the Patriots anyway. Just we're so on to Cincinnati. Out. Okay, we have it in there then. <laughs> Both pick New England. Fine. All right. Falcons Seahawks. I'm going Seahawks because at home Seahawks are still pretty formidable on the defensive end, and they looked pretty good in the last time we saw them playing. They. Russell Wilson looked pretty good. He wasn't looking too good the first couple games of the season. And he was actually injured in that game. He looked really yes. good. So, coming off a of bye week, Seahawks as well. Falcons, maybe they start their decline again right here. Same time as last year, week six. So, I'm going to go Seahawks. And I think a close one. I think it also will also be close. I'm also going to take Seattle. As I said, Dan Quinn, head coach of the uh, Atlanta Falcons, former defense coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks. Um you know, going to be low scoring. I can tell you that. I, I think so, um, too. Low scoring, um, maybe 10-6. It, it, might, it, might it might be like that Seattle-LA game a couple weeks ago, I'm Actually, thinking. Actually, now that I think about it, no, uh, I think it'll be higher scoring. Really? Because, well, Seattle's defense is obviously going to stop Julio Jones. He's not, they're not going to let him have 300 well, yards receiving. Well, they have to stop the running backs is the thing. Coming out of the backfield, yeah, Devon, Kevin Coleman and Kevin Devonta Coleman Freeman. and Devontae Freeman. You know, I was, high, I was high. I was high on Coleman last year. He didn't pan out. Now it's his year, um, and it's opposite really because Freeman was doing good last year. Now he's he's, he's doing, doing fine. He's fine. He's not doing as good. He's I think pretty similar. Um, but then uh, Coleman has stepped it up, you know, a notch. So yeah. Um, I think it's going to be low scoring. You say high scoring now. Well, now that I think about it, because the Falcons haven't exactly been a, the best defense in the world. And Atlanta it's had, true. is the best offense in the league, so they will be able to put up points, I do believe. Right. So higher score than I think you're thinking. I'm thinking maybe and maybe both teams and maybe hovering, or if not, both in the 20s. So it's We're, not we're still going to both pick Seattle. We're going to see out on a close one, though. Seattle is a tough place to play. Century League, Phil, the 12th man. Um, so, yeah, Seattle over Atlanta. Uh, game of the week, I think, for us. Going back game to that game, uh, yeah, this next game will be the game of the week. Going back to that Atlanta Seahawks game real quick before I forget. Atlanta's already traveled to Oakland. 
They went back home. They traveled to Denver last week, and now they're going up to Seattle. That's three, three uh, away games in the last four weeks um, on the West Coast. So, um, and they've won two of them. They beat Oakland and they beat Denver um, in the AFC West. To go to the NFC West uh, to play the Seahawks now, I think their luck runs out. So that's another reason why I'm going to take Seattle. All right. As I mentioned, game of the week, yeah. Cowboys taking on the Packers in Lambeau. And that's one of the reasons I'm taking the Packers. The Packers are clearly a good team. And at home in Lambeau Field. I, this is another going to be a, another really, really good game, I think, close game, because the Cowboys have looked impressive pretty much all year with Dak Prescott at the helm as a quarterback. But mostly Ezekiel Elliott running the ball behind the great offensive line of the Cowboys. Pretty much put anyone behind that offensive line. I mean, you mentioned it last week. Yeah, including me. Yeah, and you can run on the, with anyone pretty much. So that's a big reason. It's more Elliott than Prescott, I do believe. That's yeah. the reason, obviously, because you have a good run game. You can it opens up if so you, much. If you can offense. run the if you run the ball effectively week in and week out, you will win football games. I mean, it just opens Mark, up, believe because me, running it, the ball it, opens it, up your passing game. Exactly, you open up play action and stuff because you have to go. You have to. You gotta have guard that, against you that. Gotta run. have that number one good that good running back. Exactly. So. It and will be what, a good that's game. That's what Ezekiel Elliott is. It will be a good game, but if the Packers can shut down Elliott, then it's going to be a tough going for the Cowboys. And that's it's a close game, another coin flip type of game. Uh, Packers, though, in a, in a close one. Yeah, I'm also going to go Packers. It's a rematch of uh, the div- divisional playoff game two years ago in which Dallas got screwed because of a catch that was overturned. Des Bryant near the goal line. Um, I believe it was a catch. Going back to it now, they called it an incomplete pass. Green Bay ended up winning, and they ended up uh, losing Seattle the week after, uh, and then Seattle lost the New England in the Super Bowl. But um, I think Dallas is going to get screwed again. I agree with everything you said about Dallas. You know, with the run game. You know, it's because of Ezekiel Elliott uh, more than Dak Prescott. And we'll get into, you know, about Dallas and Dak Prescott and Tony Romo here in a second. But, um, you know, I think Dallas is going to get screwed again big time. And Green Green Bay is going to sneak out of Lambeau. I mean, it is their home field, but they're going to sneak out with a win. All right. Sunday Night Football is the Colts traveling to Houston to play the Texans. And I got the Texans in this one. I mean, the big loss last week here to the Minnesota. But the Colts, they haven't looked particularly special all year. They're always in like a bunch of close games that, that they should win. Some of them they win, some of them they lose. But the Colts are a team that like pretty much every game they play is a close game. Yeah. And that's kind of a it's, – it's not a bad thing. It's not a great thing either because sometimes they lose off, more often than they – more often than not, but totally agree with you. Everything you're saying is true, but should probably will be a close game because I mean, heck, the Colts playing close games. Texans aren't particularly haven't been looking super great mm-hmm. lately. It should be a close one. I'm gonna give a slight edge to Houston though in the end. I'm also gonna take Houston. Um, Indy, they might be regretting signing Chuck Pagano to an extension as their head coach. Um, his name's gonna come up to be fired uh, yeah. on uh, Black Monday, as they call it in the NFL, at the end of the season, uh, the day after the last regular season game. Um, so they're always in those close games, as you said, uh, Andrew Luck. Coming off his injury still, he's playing better, uh, you know, from last season. So um, I don't think it's going to be enough, though. Houston's playing at home. Um, they got tons of weapons. And plus, they got blown out last week on the road. Bill O'Brien's going to have his team ready um, because I'm sure he called him a bunch of effers, you know what I'm saying, uh, from his famous uh, post-game uh, interview on the field when Penn State beat Wisconsin in 2012 and every time it's actually at that game. Um, so I didn't get to see that interview until I got home. But anyways, he called him a bunch of fighters, not – the other one that everyone thinks he said. It did sound like it, but he's that type of guy. He'll have his team ready, and Houston will beat Indianapolis Sunday night. All right. Monday Night Football this week is the Jets traveling to Arizona to play the Cardinals. Uh, I'm going with the Cardinals on this one. Carson Palmer is scheduled to be back for this week, I believe. Uh, 
So that'll be a big reason why Jets have not looked good lately. I know we were really we. I had the freaking Jets winning the AFC. East. I did too. I was like, real high on not just because of Christian Hackberg, and I said it last week. You know, um, they got tons of weapons, and one of those weapons now, Eric Decker. Yeah. Torn rotator cuff in his shoulder. He's on IR. Parks. He's out for the season. Now teams can focus in on Brandon Marshall now. Yes. And they don't have to worry about that other that Eric Decker out there. They don't have to focus. They on do him have too. Quincy and Noonwa. He has improved uh, thanks third, to the third, third year guy out of Nebraska. But and then um, they just signed Austin Safarian Jenkins, who was cut by Tampa Bay because he got a DUI. And of course, Forte adds to the passing. Yeah, game. exactly. And uh, I have Forte on my fantasy team, and hopefully he does better this week. I'm starting. But still, I'm going to go Cardinals on this one. Palmer being back, they they look pretty good. Johnson looked especially good last week against the 49ers. David Johnson, that is. Yes. Had a huge game. Uh, Second year guy out of Northern Iowa. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to go Cardinals on this one. They haven't they haven't been super impressive all season, but I think they're gonna they're starting to get themselves back on track after last week. So. Did you know Dallas was real high on David Johnson last year? Really? To take him in the mid rounds, third round. I it seems like the drafted. Cowboys are always high on somebody that gets picked by someone else and then does really well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, but they got Zeke Elliott number four pick this year, and that's why they didn't take him because they knew Zeke would be. You know, in next year's draft, and it's it's still working out. But just imagine if they would have David Johnson and Ezekiel Elliott. They probably wouldn't have Ezekiel Elliott because they would probably have not been in that exactly. high position, obviously. But who knows if David Johnson wanted him to play well as he did last year, late in the season? Um, he would been probably playing even better because he'd be in that. Cowboys I can tell you line. this: Alfred Morris wouldn't be in Dallas right now. He'd probably still be in Washington, or he might be somewhere else, and he's a running back, but. Yeah, Dallas was real high on David Johnson, who's currently playing for the Cardinals, their number one guy. Everyone thought Chris Johnson was, you know, coming back after a couple years uh, being no good. And he still plays for him. He's still all right. But, you know, uh, Johnson and Johnson is is what they call it, or is what I just called it. I don't know if that's what they really call it, Um, you know, for their backfield. But um, the Cardinals are just too good. Right now, the Jets are struggling, especially with Decker going on IR uh, this past week. You know, with his uh, injury, it's it's going to be tough to win on the road, especially. And then they're playing on Monday night, um, so and especially with that time difference, New York to Arizona yeah. to Phoenix, Arizona, Glendale, Arizona, out west. Um, you know, it's going to be playing like a football game at five o'clock on Monday night. You know, if you're you know the New York, New York Jets, so um, yeah, Cardinals, Cardinals over the Jets, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Jets do win. It's going to be a close one. They have been struggling. Lost Pittsburgh last week. Um, lost everybody except Buffalo that one Thursday night game. So um, they're poised for a win, but Arizona is just too good. I'm going to take Cardinals over the Jets. All right, that's our last game for this week in the NFL, and the last thing for this episode of Across the Goal Line. But first, of course, we have the question of the week. Yes. Which we already alluded to, and we're talking about the Cowboys and Dak Prescott, because Tony Romo is scheduled to come back around week eight, and Jerry Jones publicly said that Romo's still their number one guy, and he'll likely play whenever he comes back, even if Prescott's doing well, they said. So our question of the week this week is, should the Cowboys stick with Prescott or go with Romo when he comes back? And I'm, uh, And this is obviously... This is more of a this is a bigger question, especially if Prescott still is keeps winning. Yes. If he's like not if he's like five hundred or so, yeah, just stick Romo in. I mean he's in but he has looked good all season though, so he hasn't done anything uh, to Tony Romo ish, if I if I may say. Hasn't thrown any like late game interceptions to screw him or anything. Yeah. So. Uh but this is definitely a situational thing, I think. It is. If he loses like a bunch of games leading up to Romo coming back, they'll definitely go with Romo either way, but it definitely is a big question if Prescott keeps winning. It especially is. Especially if he wins like this week against the Packers. It is. And uh, Dallas has a bye week, week seven. Romo is expected to return week eight if he does return. Um, as of right now, you keep Dak Prescott as your quarterback. You do. But as Jerry Jones said, Tony Romo is the number one guy. So I think that's a bunch of bullshit. But, you know... It's just to qui- it's really- just to quiet the critics is all it is, and get people talking about it though at the same time. Yeah, because you know the um, Cowboys are attention whores. Exactly, um, they always have been. They always will be. Hell, they haven't won a Super Bowl since uh, nineteen ninety five, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I, uh, Pittsburgh has won uh, 
two since then. They've played in three. They lost to the Packers and Super Bowl Forty Five. Now that I think about it now, I think, I think that's the reason why it keeps coming out that like because they haven't won a Super Bowl. No, I think that's oh. why it keeps coming out. They're high on somebody that's doing well now because it's like, oh, they're good. Oh, we were high on them in the draft. We could have taken them. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's a way of being like, oh, the Cowboys, oh, just to get their name out there. I agree with you. That's um, what Jerry Jones does. He just wants the media to be all over them. Exactly, and it's all about money, too, as I said earlier, too. So, um, but, yeah, you keep Dak Prescott as your quarterback as of right now. But, you know, I could see, you know, it actually happening. They do start Romo when he returns. He gets booed running onto the field, walking onto the field for his first snap, throws an interception, like, on the first play of the game, and then they want Dak back in, okay? But I could also see happening when Romo goes in. They boo him, doesn't throw the pick. They win some games, but come week 15, 16, 17, they lose, like, two to three straight there. They don't make, they don't make the playoffs then. Then they're going to want to get – they're going to run Tony Romo out of Dallas then – Keep Dak Prescott as their quarterback. Hell, he might as well go sign, uh, call up John Kitten again and come out of retirement and uh, have him back up uh, Dak Prescott. But obviously there's going to be someone better in free agency or the draft next year that they can get, um, you know, to back up Dak. Or, hell, even as a third string if they keep Romo and Dak. But Romo, I think, would be good on the Cleveland Browns. Because the Browns suck, Tony Romo sucks. Um, and Browns quarterbacks keep getting hurt. Or he could go exactly. He likes, that, that he likes too. doing that. That too. too. He does like getting hurt. Or he could even go to Chicago because Jay yeah. Cutler might be out of Chicago. Jay Cutler might be in Cleveland. As far as Jay Cutler's not out of Chicago already. So um, yeah, Dak. Going back to the question for the third time now, Dak should be uh, the starter over Tony Romo. Long story short. Yes, if he keeps it up, definitely got to stick with Dak Prescott. He's doing exactly what they need him to do, and that's just mostly manage the game because the running game is doing it mostly for him. Yeah. And manage the game, don't make any dumb mistakes. He hasn't really made any dumb mistakes. As a rookie coming out of the sixth round or whatever, you know, he hasn't made any of these stupid mistakes that rookies tend to make. Who, Dak? Dak. He hasn't he really made any mistakes. Fourth round pick. Fourth round. Fourth it's round. Sixth round. Still a late round pick, though. Exactly. So. And the mid rounds of the draft is when, you know, teams make it or break it with, you know, players. Um, I've always thought that, and it's true. Because you look at some of the guys that are stars in the NFL now, they went to small schools, or they still want to big schools, but they don't get drafted until late, and then they have to you know, either sit and wait, or they start right away, and then they shine, rather than the top overall pick. Look at Jamarcus Russell of all people. You know, we've the worst. talked about it you know, before. So The worst number one draft um, pick. Probably of all time. time. Exactly. So, um, yeah. Dak... He's Dallas doing exactly what he he's needs doing to. his thing. He's doing just what, let him let him do his thing. You're winning games exactly. Why don't you want more of that? Because you're the Cowboys. That's how. Why don't you want to win? Because you're the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. You want you want all this attention and whatnot. It's it's stupid if they do go with Romo, especially. Well, and I wouldn't be. Week and six, I wouldn't right? be. So, it's week six. They, they got to buy next week, next week and, and then then come, Romo come back at week. So they could be. It's what? two weeks from five now. Five and one. It's two weeks okay. from now. He could be he could be coming back. They could be what? Five and one if they win this week against the Packers. Would it be five? No, and they're four and one right now. It would be five and one if they beat the Packers this week is what I'm saying. Yeah, but then they'd be... Oh, go, yeah, okay, because then they have... Going into their bye and going yes, into I maybe Romo coming back. I was thinking what you were saying. You thought they already had their no. bye for some reason. Okay, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. If they're five and one going into week eight and Romo comes That's back... That's pretty damn good with a rookie quarterback... A and fourth running round pickball people. And running back. And yes. He, he was the fourth overall pick. He is running behind the best offensive line in football. Still, he's a rookie. Yes. Two rookies running your offense. Des Bryant not even on the field at the moment. Yeah, he's still hurt. And you're winning games. And their defense is just... You don't want to mess that up by yeah. putting in Romo. Exactly. Hell, because it, cha- it changes the it changes the locker room. It changes the pace of the game, I guess you could say. It just changes the whole... Um, what's the word I want to use, Corey? Changes the whole, uh, I don't know if you want to say face of the team, face of the franchise, but. Um, it's the leadership, the mojo. The mo, mojo is the word I was looking for. It changes the mojo and the leadership, exactly. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. Exactly. Kind of think of the right word. And hell, like you were saying, maybe he comes out in first throw, 
Throws a pick, Romo. Yep. What if he comes out first play, There's shatters his collarbone again or something? Well, I would love that because then his career would be over. He would actually decide. He Well, he probably wouldn't decide to, you know, retire, but, you know, it would just be funny as hell. If you're the Cowboys, you want to make the playoffs, do you not? Like, if Prescott's winning, you got to keep him in. Even mm-hmm. if they lose this week, they'll be 4-2. and two. They're still great. They're still looking fantastic. They're at the top of the NFC East right now. Yeah. And, and then I you mean, still got Philly, too. You know, both those teams could, two be, rookie in the, quarterbacks. could be in the playoffs come uh, come January. Two rookie quarterbacks getting it done. And Wentz wasn't even scheduled to be the, the starter when they was first picked. No. They, had, they still had Bradford, for crying out loud. Yep. And he got shipped to Minnesota. And look what Minnesota's doing. Because uh, of Teddy Bridgewater getting injured. But Minnesota's winning because of their defense. It not is their because defense. of Sam Bradford. D- Sam Bradford's doing what he needs to do and manage the game. Yeah. And I mean, I said it whenever, was it last week or the week before that, He's doing well because he doesn't need to be the one throwing the ball around mm-hmm. trying to win the game. The defense is helping him do that. Like yeah. He doesn't need to make any big plays and be the one that's relied upon. And that you don't want Sam Bradford throwing it 40, 50 times a game. He's definitely not a guy who won't do that. And the Vikings are doing exactly what they need to do. I mean, the Broncos won last year with mediocre quarterback play pretty much the entire season. And the Vikings, well, the Vikings can do it again. You can't call Peyton mediocre. You can call uh, Brock Osweiler mediocre. His season was mediocre. Yeah, I agree. And we just said that. Peyton Manning's season was mediocre. Yeah. He was mediocre that season. Well, that season, yes, okay. That season, yes, I can okay. Agree I agree. That. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. Not his career, though. No, not never definitely not his career. Mediocre. So, uh, either way, I guess we'll leave it at that. And Good that's going to wrap it up this week on Across the Goal Line. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ATGL16. All the links available in the description of this video. Answer the question of the week on Facebook or Twitter by voting in our poll. You can follow Luke at CoolAndLuke96 and me at CAMains14 on Twitter as well. And also don't forget to buy our merch, which you can contact us about using all of those social media platforms or emailing us at Across the Goal Line 2016 at gmail.com. And for Luke Gossart, I'm Corey Maines, and we will see you on the next edition of Across the Goal Line, live from the field.